welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. There we go, Jim Miller, the senior pastor here. To all who have gathered in person, welcome, as well as those who are joining us online. So glad to have this opportunity to worship with you. My, you're all looking so well rested here. You needed that extra hour, didn't you there? So you're, you're ready to go. You're ready to worship this day. So we look forward to worshiping with you. On this special Sunday, we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. And so we want to say a special word of welcome to uh, families who have gathered here as we honor your loved ones. We are just so honored to have this opportunity to meet with you. And I'll say a little bit about that more in a moment. I did want to share that the uh, white rose on our altar is in loving memory of Randy Smith. Uh, We celebrated Randy's life yesterday with a graveside service. So to all of uh, Randy's family, we are just uh, honored to have had Randy amongst us. As I uh, shared at the graveside, we are a better church because of Randy Smith and Rick Smith's uh, youngest brother. So to all the family here, we are just uh, honored to have had the opportunity to journey with Randy. Also, uh, we received word from family that a memorial service celebrating the life of Gary Baumgarten will be held next Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock at Butler's Orchard. So wanted to share that with you as well. And we continue to keep Paul and Angie in our prayers. As we gather this day, we're reminded on this All Saints Sunday that we will be celebrating the lives, we'll be naming the names of our church members who have passed since last uh, All Saints Sunday, and we'll be lighting a candle and sounding a bell in their honor as we show their picture. During that time, uh, loved ones who are here, we invite you to stand when your uh, family's member picture is shown. We also, you are invited to take uh, the candle home with you after the service. Also in the litany for the day, there'll be that opportunity to voice aloud those saints that we are remembering who are on our hearts this day. There's nothing magical about just one year. We know that our Hearts are heavy as we're reminded of those who have preceded us, who are now at rest with the Lord, and we just give thanks for their faith journey. So that's part of what we'll be celebrating in this service as we give thanks for them. During the service, this being the first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. All will be invited to come and to receive the sacrament. You do not have to be a member of this church. Just the fact that you are here we give thanks for and we break bread together and we'll guide you through that part of the service. So as we gather, we are reminded of why we gather and that is to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's in his name that I welcome you to our service. Please join me now in our call to worship. On this All Saints Day, we gather to join the multitude of saints across the generations from all tribes, peoples, and languages to proclaim. Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. We come to remember, to grieve, and to celebrate those saints who have come before, yet whose life and witness continues to teach us. Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. We gather today as the family of Christ, siblings and saints, diverse yet united by grace, to live lives that declare salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. May we be guided today by the Lamb, who is our shepherd, the one who gathers us, comforts us, and tends us. May we join in the work of the shepherd to bring about a world with no more hunger, no more thirst, no more suffering, and no more pain that all the saints of the past, the present, and the future may share in God's abundant life. Amen. Let us pray together. We bless your holy name, O God, and for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now let us join as we we invite all who are able to please stand for our opening hymn, Holy, 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 found on page 64 and on screen.
please be seated. Now let us offer together our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Hear these words first. Lord Jesus, you bless the poor in spirit and give them the kingdom. But we fatten ourselves, as James says, in the day of slaughter. We turn away from those whose physical poverty reminds us of our true spiritual state. And we build our own little kingdoms of self. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. You bless those who mourn, and you comfort them. But we flee grief that leads to repentance, and we seek comfort in possessions and prestige and power. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. You bless the meek and promise them the earth. You bless the merciful and promise them mercy. But we are far from meek. We try to make the world our own through pride and self-promotion. We forget the forgiveness that was won at such cost, and we hold grudges at the slightest offense. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. You bless those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You promise to satisfy their desires. You bless the pure in heart and promise that they shall see God. But we hunger and thirst after everything else, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life. Our hearts are not pure, and so we cannot see you. Kie eleison, Lord, have mercy. You bless the peacemakers and the persecuted and the reviled. You call them sons of your Father, and you give them the kingdom of heaven. We covet each other's things and looks and jobs and successes. We seek friendship with the world over living as heirs of your kingdom. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Celebrating the peace of Christ that meets us this day, let us take this time to exchange signs of peace with one another. Fist bumps, air hugs, hugs, handshakes. You gauge as you greet one another and exchange signs of peace. How we give thanks and praise for this opportunity to gather together. We are grateful to have our younger children here, so I'd like to invite our little ones and then youth, if you would surround them here. We invite our little ones to come up for this morning's children's message. After the children's message, we do have uh, elementary Sunday school and we also have uh, professional nursery care, so we offer this as well. So glad to have you all here. I think little one's got a head start to the nursery today. It's so inviting there. Who am I to get in their way? Welcome. Sir. Happy birthday. Thank you. Nicole, happy birthday to you. Goodness. Good to see you all. We're honored to get to celebrate it with you. Very good. How's everybody doing this morning? Did you like having that extra hour of rest today? I did. <laughs> no? No, I know it's a bit of adjustment, isn't it? Indeed. In fact... 
in my first church, there was an elderly woman who once told me, she said, Pastor, life is just one adjustment after another. And I've thought about that over the years, and I know I have some years on you, but it's proved very true to me. Sometimes life adjustments are pretty minor. Extra hour of sleep, less hour of sleep. And sometimes they're major, aren't they? A new school or a new family situation, a loss of a loved one, or we've had a change in our household. I have a dear friend who lost their pet this week. It's been a lot of, a lot of sorrow. So there are minor adjustments and there are major ones. But the one thing we can hold in common is that God is with us in each moment of our lives, and that's something we celebrate when we worship. So as we gather today, we're gathering for All Saints Sunday. What do you think of when I say the word saint? What comes to mind? Sometimes, yep, and uh, in traditions, they have official sainthood. I'd like to give you a new definition or how we operate. You are a saint. You know why I can say that? Because a saint is someone who seeks to live in a right relationship with Jesus. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. If it wasn't God is already working in your life, inviting you to go deeper in your relationship with God through Christ. So we gather as saints. Now, I brought something today. Do you recognize this here? Candle, that's right. It is a plastic candle. Remember when you were younger, Christmas Eve service, and we weren't sure about giving you a candle with a flame on it, so we had the plastic one there. Well, we used that on Christmas Eve to celebrate what? That Christ is the light of the world. Now, am I rushing the holiday? No. <laughs> you could think of it in that way. But today we'll be lighting candles because light symbolizes God's presence. And the saints that we're remembering, that we're thinking about, are those who allow Christ's light to shine in their lives. And that's where we come in. They now rest from their labor, those we name today. But we have opportunity today, and I pray many days ahead, to be a witness of God's love in our world. Our world needs that love, doesn't it? And God is seeking to allow God's light to shine in your life and in mine. So I have something for you here. DJ, I have some glow sticks there. So if you would take one of those with you, and may it remind you that God's light is with you, and God is seeking to work through your life. Thank you all for joining me, and you're invited to return to your seats and be part of our worship experience. Thank you for coming. And now we join in our litany of remembrance. Living God, our guide and guardian, who sits on the throne and delivers us into eternal life, we give you thanks for the saints of every time, tribe, and tongue who now rest in the shelter of your embrace. We set aside this moment to remember those saints who are dear and precious to us who have died and entered into glory during the last 12 months. Now as I read these names, if we have family members here, you're invited to stand if you're able when your loved one's name is shared. We remember with thanksgiving, Sandra Spickler. Glenn Matoff. Leah Flory. Leela Wagner. Robert Phoenix. Dr. Kaz Kawata.
Jean Richards. Elizabeth Betsy Bart. Francis Fran Blenderman. Martha Grimm. Joyce Brown. Arthur William Bill Ruff, Jr. Nancy Swope. Valerie Jardine. Joanne Thomas. Gary Baumgarten. Randy Smith. All others who have passed. We bless you for the life and love of these dear saints and rejoice for them that they have entered into the fullness of life in your presence. We also remember those saints who we hold in our hearts, who have not been with us for some time, yet whose life and witness continue to form and shape us as your disciples. We honor them now by lifting their names aloud or in our hearts. On this All Saints Sunday, we also remember that we too are living saints, members of the family of God with all the saints of the past, the present, and the future. And so we remember we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So today and every day, May we put on Christ and live as saints who tend the poor, comfort the mourners, learn from the meek, affirm those who seek righteousness, offer mercy alongside the merciful, and work for peace with the peacemakers until Christ comes in final victory and we feast as the family of God at his heavenly banquet. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we sing the first, second, and sixth verses of For All the Saints.
I invite you to remain standing as Larry shares with us our gospel lesson. Good morning, church. The gospel lesson today comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, for this time. Thank you for the witness of the saints that continue to flood our hearts and our minds. Lord, as they know in full what we know in part, but you do tell us in your word in Hebrews that the saints are cheering us on. Thank you for their being our advocates, our continued inspirations and examples, knowing you are the source of the love of the witness they have given to us, and in memory continue to give to us. Allow your same Holy Spirit that inspired and empowered them to work in this time, we pray, in Christ's holy name. Amen. I heard recently about a little boy who was visiting his grandfather. His grandfather lived in another town. When Sunday came, the grandfather took his young grandson to church. And it was one of these beautiful church sanctuaries, much like this, that had the stained glass windows all around. And the grandfather explained them to the little boy. And when the little boy returned home, his dad asked him about his church experience. He described the windows and said there were windows for St. Matthew and St. Mark, St. Luke and St. John. And his father asked the little boy, so... uh, Tell me, what is a saint? The boy thought for a moment and responded. He said, a saint is somebody the light shines through. I love that explanation. A saint is someone that the light shines through. These are the saints that we have named and that you are remembering in your hearts this morning. They allowed the light of Christ to shine through them. And we have that same light to draw upon. In fact, every time we open the scriptures, as Larry just so powerfully shared with us, a gospel lesson. The word gospel means good news. Now, in our Monday morning Bible study, and we'd love to have you. It's on Zoom at 10 a.m. if that time works for you, and we're going to look at other opportunities in the future for you. Join us. We looked at this passage and began by asking ourselves, well, where is the good news <laughs> in this passage here where you know, Jesus talks about how the uh, scribes and the Pharisees, they, uh, they sit on the seat of Moses and they give the laws. Jesus says, Do what they tell you to do. Do what they say. Do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. Maybe you had a 
saint in your life, one of those parents or grandparents or uncles or aunts that would say words to a similar effect. Uh, uh, do as I say, not, a, not as I do here. So we, we recognize there is imperfection here that we're going on to. Notice what Jesus is saying. And notice what he's not saying. It's very careful when we look back at this text and what's happening. Jesus is not putting down the teachers. He's not putting down Judaism. He, after all, was a Jew. Nor was he broad brushing and putting down scribes and Pharisees. There were many good scribes and Pharisees they, who did their diligent work that we have the laws of Moses were passed down all these many generations. No. Nor was Matthew writing to this first century church putting down others in a broad brush stroke. We must be careful that we do not do the same with all that's happening right now in our world. Anti-Semitism, the hate. We hear broad brush strokes so often, whether describing the people of Israel or Palestine or what's happening to the people of Gaza. Or we throw around these labels, oh, they're progressive, they're conservative. We broad brush groups of people. That's not what Jesus was saying. He was calling us as the church, to let the light of Christ shine through us in such a way when you come to the end of this passage, he shows us how. He says, you know, those who seek to exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves, they will be exalted. Those who seek to glorify God and honor God's ways, God's teachings, yes, God's laws. After all, Jesus said he didn't come to condemn the law, but to fulfill it. They'd added such layers. The people were being weighed down by the teachings. When we know it is Christ's purpose to lift us up. And as the church, we are called to be his instruments in doing the same. But too often, we just have broad brushes of judgment to offer the world. The world doesn't need us as pundits and certainly not to be offering or being judgmental. I like this Peanuts cartoon Richard Drake reflected on. You remember Charlie Brown's baseball team where he was the pitcher? They were always getting clobbered. Well, he writes on this particular Peanuts cartoon strip there, little Lucy who is known to be ever ready with unsolicited advice is playing right field in a baseball game. Charlie Brown is pitching. Let's win one for a change, Charlie Brown, Lucy cries out. Well, Charlie Brown then throws his first pitch and the batter hits the ball to right field. But Lucy makes no attempt to catch it. She just stands there and does nothing. Charlie Brown yells at her. <laughs> he says, if you're so interested in winning, why don't you try to catch the ball? To which a defiant Lucy replies, my role is strictly advisory. <laughs> well, the saints of faith for us saw their role not only as advisory. <laughs> they shared the faith with us, at times imperfectly like the rest of us, but still able to let God's mercy and grace shine through. Jesus is calling us to be such saints. Imperfect as we are, he's seeking to share his love through us and the difference our presence and our proclamation can make in this world. One of the saints I am celebrating in my heart this year is the Reverend Donald Stewart. Don Stewart was my first district superintendent in what was then the Washington West District, so you would have been under him at Grace. He was the reason I came to this conference, was instrumental in introducing me to the Baltimore-Washington Conference. I remember our moving day. You know what moving days can be like. Hectic, to say the least. 
Here were all our physical belongings in a moving van showing up in Hyattstown from the eastern shore. Movers were busy unloading. Our children, Rebecca was two and Zach was a newborn. And there we were in the midst of all these boxes surrounding us in our living room and all the chaos unfolding. And I turned around and there stands Reverend Stewart. He said, Jim, I just stopped by to see if you needed anything. Don't worry, you'll get through this moment. And went on his way. Later in the week, it was a Saturday night. Somewhat unpacked, but getting ready for my first Sunday morning, looking over the sermon, and the phone rang. Again, it was Don. Saying, Jim, I just wanted to let you know I was praying for you. You'll do fine. Be sure and give them the gospel. He probably had 50-some pastors under his care, yet took that time, one, to be a presence, and then to remind me, our work is to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. As Bishop Easterling would say, to keep the main thing the main thing. That's what we're called to do. Those that Jesus called out We're weighing folks down when, in fact, the work of the church is to be lifting others up, introducing and teaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ that sees the value in everyone and seeks to spread his love, allowing God's light to shine through us. But that takes a not what's in it for me attitude, but rather how can I serve you, Lord? Do we come this day? Remembering saints who lived their lives to see what they could gain for themselves? No. They were the ones who sought to serve, to help, to make this world better. Susan Hydrid shares the following about servanthood. She writes, Jesus' interpretation of the law underscores that humans are on a level playing field. God extends mercy to all, including the tax collector and the sinner. The one who seeks attention and status through God's law misinterprets it. The attitude of a servant is more appropriate. For the servant shapes their actions according to the master's will. Jesus shows us a master whose expectations are high, but they are guided first and foremost by mercy. Guided first and foremost by mercy. God is seeking to guide us to live the kind of life that will be a light that will help others. Earlier in the week, after the Texas Rangers won it all, my wife Betsy said to me, so Jim, what are you going to watch now that baseball is over on television? I said, I'm not sure and still I'm not. I don't know why I'm a baseball fan. I I never played on a school team, but we had some wonderful neighborhood teams that were part of our growing up. As I reflect on those times, I was reminded how my older brother, David, and several of his friends actually collected the baseball cards. Remember those cards that came with that stale stick of bubble gum in them? Some folks would say, you just buy it for the gum. If you ever tried to chew that gum, you know they were wrong, but we, we collected them. Well, they organized a group, a club, where they not only collected and traded the cards, but had a game they figured out with dice to play it. But I was not invited to be part of their club. I remember sitting outside, staring in the basement window where they were gathered, wanting to be part of the gathering. So I devised a plan. I knew my father was coming home for lunch, and I waited till he had had his lunch and was just about to go out the door when I said to my dad, Dad, David's in a club, and they won't let me in. With little time to think about it, my dad turned and said to David, If he's not in, you're not in. So I was admitted to the club that day. (laughs) But even though you're admitted or allowed in, and know that you're not really wanted. It's not very enjoyable. Somebody's inviting you because they're supposed to or told to. But then something changed. It was later that summer I became ill and ended up in the hospital with pneumonia. 
Then they were very strict. No children could visit you, so I didn't get to see my siblings. And about after a week, my father came in and said, I want you to look out your window there. And I looked out, and there stood my brother and the rest of his friends waving to me. He said, they have a gift for you, and he handed it to me. And I opened it up, and it was this collection of baseball cards. Not just older, extra ones. I mean, these were, back then, would have been Brooks Robinson and Frank Robinson and Henry Aaron and Roberto Clemente. These were the best of the best. They had collected their best and put them together and gave that to me. That gift showed me and reminded me of love and their acceptance of me. What a difference. Now, I didn't keep those cards under glass or protect them well, and I don't even have them today, but their gesture, their offering their best, continues to serve to me as a model for faith. What would it look like to offer God our very best? Sadly, I'm sure many of you have been in those moments where you weren't really welcomed or didn't feel welcomed or invited, left out, marginalized. But then we turn to the gospel and we do find the good news of a Savior who doesn't broad brush any of us but knows us each one and loves us and wants to be at the center of our lives and gave his very best, gave his all that we may know eternal life. That's what we celebrate as we come to the table now. And the model that the saints have given us What would it look like to offer God and God's people our best? What a difference we would make in this world. And what an opportunity we are given this day as we experience Christ's presence anew. So come, come to the table, receive the gift as God has offered us God's best, that we may know fullness, we may be the light of the world as Christ shines through us. Evil will be overcome, not by evil, but by good. And this is the promise we are given. Amen. And so with thanksgiving in our hearts, we take this opportunity to give back to God, that through your giving, the ministries of Christ can continue in the life and through the life of this church. So with joy, we present our offering unto the Lord as we are favored with a special music by our praise band.
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. This morning I like you invite you to hear these words of the great thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us join together in praying the prayer that he has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, the blood of Christ shed for us, God's gift that we may know what we celebrate this day with all the saints, that God's strength is sufficient. To you are come. I'm going to ask our worship guides, they will lead you forward. Uh, All the elements are gluten-free, and we also have the safety packets if you'd like to receive those. And again, all are invited to come and receive. You will be guided for it.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this holy meal. Thank you for the opportunity to remember this day. We are remembering the saints, maybe those who first taught us about communion, Sunday school, or proclaimed your word. Remembering the lessons taught on the way to church and the way home from church, at the bus stop, washing dishes, bedtime stories, good morning wake-up calls. They met us where we were at. They learned this from you. You are a God who meets us right where we're at. You tell us you know the words before we ever utter them. You know what we're thinking. You know our regrets. You know our sins. But what you also want us to remember is this is all overcome at Calvary because of your gift known to us and our Savior. We are reminded that this is a day of new beginnings. As much as we are remembering the past, we are remembering the future and knowing that you still are at work. This is what gives us hope as we pray for what is happening in the Middle East. We pray, O oh God, for healing. We pray, O oh God, that you will watch over all who are in need. We pray that you will be about those who are about the work of rescue, of care. We pray for our leaders and for the weight that is upon their shoulders where the issues are so complex. Before our words of advisement that often lead to judgment, we first stop and pray. We pray for one another. We pray and look forward to that time when there will be no more war, there will be no more hunger, there will be no more exclusion, but all will be welcome, truly welcome. But that can only happen through you. And the good news is that's what's going to happen, for your word is sure. Help us, O oh God, for each of us to do our part. You tell us in your word that we are each fearfully and wonderfully made in Psalm 139, knitted together in our mother's womb. You have a plan for each of our lives. Help us, O oh God, to live out your will, to honor you in all that we do as a child, as a parent, as a teacher, as a student, as a neighbor, as a friend, spouse. Use us, O oh God. Like the saints, we remember because of us and in spite of us, you can work through us and make a difference in this world. We are yours. Use us, O oh God. Guide us as a church community. Lord, we seek to glorify you. And we remember you gave us your best in Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we join in singing our closing hymn, Sing with All the Saints in Glory, found on page 702.
please be seated. And again, I want to thank the saints we named, families, uh, being here today and remind you of the candle to take with you. And we give thanks for their memory and our memory of them that just continues to inspire us and know they have inspired you. I invite you to reflect on the following as we begin a, a new week. Reflect on how the saints in your life, those who practice what they taught, in what ways did they help lift you up versus burden you down when they let God's teachings work through them? Reflect on how time after time Jesus came alongside the vulnerable, the hurting, and the outcast. Who might we come alongside in their walk with Christ? And finally, what practices, groups in your life help hold you in loving accountability? How might you help provide the gift of accountability to another? Reflect on Susan Hyland's teaching that in Christ we are liberated from a preoccupation with ourselves and can focus on faithful and gratifying service to God and God's people. Now as we go forth, beloved, receive this good news. You are children of God, united as family with the saints of every tribe, nation, language, and generation. Go forth now in the company of the multitude who have put on the life of the Lamb, that you may love and live after the imitation of Christ our Savior. Amen.